n ones, right? Then uh, this uh, sum p1 plus p2 plus, plus pn is simply one transpose to make it a row rather than column uh, times a vector p of all uh, unknown powers p, right? Uh, what about uh, this inequality? Well, uh, we can let me use the same notation as in the lecture notes so that I don't confuse you. How did I call uh, this? I call it V. So let's define also a vector V whose coordinates are uh, gamma 1 eta 1 divided by g11 and so forth. And this is, of course, transposed because it's a row. Uh, gamma n eta n divided by g n n. And remember, uh, uh, remember that so eta, etas are noise. So that's the noise uh, that is uh, environmental noise uh, and uh, hardware noise, right? The, the thermal noise of semiconductors and whatnot, right? So we can now write this as follows. Uh, we can get two matrices, uh, uh, one matrix, uh, which we denote by F. So this will be a matrix F, looks as follows. Uh, it is zero here, and then it is uh, uh, G um, one uh, two divided by G one one, and it is G one three divided by G two two. Uh, sorry, G uh, G. I, I so this would be here um, G11 uh, one, one, and this is also G11 one, one, G1n divided by G11 one, one, right so um, um, then the second row is uh, G21 divided by G22, two, two, and then a zero, and then G, uh, G, oh, let me not make a mistake, G23 divided by G22, two, two, G2n divided by G22, two, two, and you get the idea here at the end we have zero at the end, and we have g n one, g n n, g n two, uh, g n n, and so forth. So this will be our matrix F. Then we need another very simple <coughs> matrix, which we will denote by D. And what is D like? Well, it's just a diagonal uh, matrix here is uh, just uh, uh, gamma 1 uh, on the first, and then zeros everywhere, then 0, gamma 2, 0 everywhere and the very last one is zero up to gamma n and we call this matrix d right so now we can write this uh, uh, linear program in a much more compact way we can say minimize the dot product right uh, one transpose dot uh, p, right? Uh, subject to 
and then we will have identity matrix. So what is I? Let me write here also I. I is just one on diagonals and then zeros everywhere. This we will call the identity matrix, right? So it's I minus the F times P, right? is bigger or equal than vector v, where vector v is this, right? So to see this, notice that uh, if you multiply p by these uh, values, um, right, it will put precisely these coefficients everywhere. And then when you multiply the resulting vector by gamma, right, this will multiply precisely uh, each uh, uh, column by uh, corresponding, sorry, each, uh, uh, el each element by corresponding gamma i, right? Because if you have a vector here, this will only multiply the i-th coordinate. So here we have a very uh, nice expression, and of course, vector p is uh, bigger, uh, strictly bigger than zero. And uh, somehow we have to solve this linear problem, or linear program, in a distributed way. But we have to first figure out: uh, are there any feasible solutions, right? And when there are feasible solutions, it turns out <coughs> that this is the case if and only if uh, this matrix, uh, DF, uh, has a reasonably small spectral radius. So let's now say, so uh, spectral <coughs> radius of a matrix A is uh, the uh, largest absolute value uh, of uh, its eigenvectors right so uh, sorry eigenvalues okay so um, Okay, yeah, um, let me see what's next. Okay, so uh, what is an eigenvalue? Eigenvalue is a uh, 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 number uh, lambda, so that Ax equals lambda x. And uh, say if this is there are uh, there are n in general uh, eigenvalues of a matrix of size i, and uh, they can be both real and complex. Uh, uh, but uh, so we uh, for that reason we look for max lambda i, and uh, uh, the size of the uh, of this product of product this matrix is the size of uh, the eigenvalues depends on these uh, gammas and if you are sufficiently modest with the what gammas are then all the uh, eigenvalues will be by absolute value smaller than 1 
So the goal is uh, uh, keep all uh, eigenvalues uh, smaller than one. Okay, so why do we do that? <laughs> the reason is uh, that, uh, so reason, uh, it, by the way, uh, this, uh, this number, let's call it the rho, which is the max of eigenvalues. Um, so if uh, uh, rho i uh, abs uh, the largest absolute value of uh, uh, of uh, how do they call them lambda i so if uh, a rho is smaller than one then if you take this matrix n and uh, uh, you find its power, uh, it will converge to zero uh, matrix as n goes to infinity. Now, this is easy to see. This is true for all <coughs> matrices that have spectral radius smaller than one. But if uh, they are, the matrices are a little bit more regular, namely, if it happens that uh, um, that the that each eigenvalue has multiplicity one, right? Uh, and this means uh, so. How do we find uh, eigenvalues of uh, uh, of a matrix? We consider um, uh, a minus lambda times i, right, times x uh, equals to zero, right, because that's precisely to say that uh, 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 x is an eigenvector for value lambda, right? Uh, so what is this? Uh, this simply puts uh, uh, everywhere, say, if this is i11, one, one, it puts minus lambda everywhere. So you get uh, a polynomial when you compute. In order for a homogeneous system to be <coughs> to have a solution, the determinant has to be equal to 0. Uh, so you get a polynomial of degree n. And every polynomial of degree n has exactly n roots, possibly complex roots, right? So if all of the lambdas are different, uh, uh, then A will have <coughs> exactly one linearly independent factor, right? Uh, or there will have only one uh, vector modulo multiplicative constant uh, eigenvector. <coughs> and then A can be written in the form Q times uh, the matrix uh, uh, that uh, looks like this, uh, uh, lambda 1 up to lambda n and zeros everywhere, and then q to the minus 1, right? This is when uh, A has uh, uh, n independent uh, eigenvectors, right? And then if you find A to the n, if you write this n times adjacent q, and so what would this be? It will be q <coughs> times this matrix, let's call it uh, lambda q, lambda no, minus 1, and then q, lambda q minus 1, and so forth. So notice this now cancel out, and you get that this is q uh, matrix lambda of eigenvalues uh, to the power n, q to the minus 1. And now, but what is lambda to the n? Because this is just diagonal matrix. This is just lambda 1 to the n, 
lambda, uh, ah, well, uh, this is what you scale, yeah? Let us use k because n is, uh, uh, we already use. Uh, so this will now uh, go to uh, matrix zero, right? Because all of these are smaller than one. So they will all converge to the zero matrix. So A of n will be, uh, will converge to zero. Now, why do we, uh, need that, right? Um, okay, um, why do we need that? We need it for the following uh, important feature of such matrices. Uh, um, we have the following. Uh, in general, right, for any matrix A, so for any matrix A, uh, we have the following formula. Uh, I minus A uh, times some, um, let's say, I equals zero to k, a to the k. Uh, what is this equal to? Well, if I multiply, I get sum i equals to 0 to k, a, oops, this should be i, a to the i. Are you with me? So <coughs> we are computing i minus a times the sum of the powers, i power of a matrix. So we get this minus and then sum, because we have an extra a, it will go i equals from 1 to n plus 1, right, <coughs> times a to the i. And notice now they all cancel out, except there is nothing to cancel for i is equal to 0. So you get i. And here there is nothing to cancel the very last one. So you get i to the n plus 1. So what does this mean? <coughs> if I take the limit, uh, so uh, if rho a is smaller than 1, then if I then uh, taking limit I get the following uh, I get that i minus a times uh, this infinite sum i equals from 0 to infinity a to the i will converge to i, right? Because, uh, because a to the n plus 1 converges to 0, right? So look what we get in this way. This matrix times sum of these matrices converges to a. So uh, what is then the inverse matrix of i minus a? The sum, right? Uh, so we get that uh, i minus a on minus 1 is precisely equal to the sum i equals to from 0 to n, oh, sorry, to infinity a to the i. But a to the i also goes to 0, right? Uh, uh, thus, uh, for sufficiently large n, we in fact have that i minus a to the minus 1 is approximately equal to the finite sum i equals from 0 to infinity a 
to the, oh sorry, to cap it, to just, uh, uh, let's call it, uh, uh, not n uh, for sufficiently large k, for sufficiently large k, we have that the inverse of this matrix is uh, i to the, the sum of the powers. Why is this important? You see, inverting a large matrix is computationally very expensive. And worse, it's terribly numerically unstable. In fact, in practice, <coughs> we never invert large matrices. We reduce uh, uh, inversion of matrices to solution of some linear equations with corresponding matrix. And then uh, we solve the equations using some iterative approximate methods. There are gazillions of them all implemented in packages like MATLAB. <coughs> so, but computing powers of a matrix is perfectly stable. So you kind of reduce the inherently unstable operation to computing uh, this sum of the powers of, uh, of, of that matrix, right? So now, um, what do we have? Let's now see what we achieve with this. So if we keep the spectral radius of A reasonably small by keeping the gammas reasonably small, then we have this feature that the power of a matrix goes to zero and we can apply this approximation formula. Okay, our problem was, uh, remember, the constraint was I minus, uh, how did we call the matrices? Uh, uh, the matrices DF. I minus DF times P has to be bigger or equal than vector v. Okay, yeah. So now let us define p star. So uh, let us take p star to be the following vector. I minus df to the minus 1 uh, times our vector v. Right? What do we have then? Uh, if this is the case, then we will have that uh, I minus Vf times P star will be precisely uh, vector V. If I multiply by inverse of these both sides, I'll get this. I minus Df uh, to the minus 1 times I minus Df P star is equal to I minus Df um, times uh, 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 minus 1 times vector v. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy is equal sum of uh, uh, df to the power i when i goes from 0 to infinity, both here and here as well, right? df has all entries <coughs> non-negative, 0 or these ratios of the attenuations of the channels, right? So this means that this is always positive, right? Uh, now this is bigger or equal than uh, uh, let me see, uh, I minus 
the f all the uh, coefficients of let's see let's see what is our constraint um, our constraint yes uh, is uh, that uh, uh, So our constraint is uh, uh, that this is equal to that, but this vector is positive, right? Because v vector v consists of uh, uh, where is vector v here? These are all positive numbers. Uh, so all coordinates of this vector are positive. Uh, and uh, this guy is a sum of positive matrices. So in that product, uh, all the coordinates will be positive. So what do we get then? We have that uh, uh, I minus DF uh, times uh, P uh, must be uh, bigger or equal than I minus uh, DF P star, right? Where does this come from? Well, this by our choice is our vector V, right? And we know that V is uh, positive. So what do we get? Uh, we get that um, we get that so this is bigger or equal than zero. So we get that um, right because this is just so this is equal to V, so our constraint says this is bigger than that. But if I move this to the other side, I get I minus DF, P minus P star is always bigger or equal than uh, zero. All right? Um, now. So what do we uh, get? Uh, we get that uh, this implies, uh, so this also implies by multiplying by uh, i minus df to the minus 1, i minus df p minus p star bigger or equal than zero, right? Because this is a positive matrix. So the conclusion is that P is, must be bigger or equal than P star. Every coordinate of P must be bigger or equal than corresponding coordinate of P star. But we are trying to minimize uh, some of the coordinates of P. So thus, uh, sum of P is minimized for precisely uh, p equals p star. So what is, uh, this is very nicely described both in my lecture notes and in the textbook, right? Uh, so let us see, now we are almost there. It's a little bit, so notice, you will see, the algorithm is astonishingly simple, but the justification why it works is uh, precisely this calculation, and it's obviously highly non-trivial. Right? So we got, so essentially this justifies us, so we are looking for P star, which is equal to 
I minus B F to the minus 1 times V. Right? But we know what this is. So P star is equal to sum of all powers of I from 0 to infinity uh, times our vector V. Right? But this is very well approximated uh, with the sum when i equals from 0 to some sufficiently large number k, ki, uh, a times i times p. And now we use exactly the same trick as uh, in page rank. We find this by an iterative method. How do we do it? Uh, we start with, uh, um, you can start with arbitrary vector, uh, in fact, but we can start with, yeah, we start with V. So let us define, so define, uh, P iteration T plus 1 equal P iteration T. Uh, ah, sorry, I forgot DF. It's DF. You remember what we did. That's precisely what we did in page rank. Uh, the page rank iteration was a product of the Guru matrix with the right. Uh, the right one times the previous iteration of the page rank, right? Plus, here we have to add vector v, right? Then what do we have? Then claim um, we get the following, that p uh, to the power t can be written uh, as uh, uh, df to the power t uh, times a uh, zero iteration of p we can just take to be v. Okay, so and you can actually start with an arbitrary vector; it doesn't matter. Just uh, is in the page rank, right? So then this is equal to that plus sum i equals from 0 to t minus 1 of df to the i uh, times v. Why is this so? Well, uh, by proof by induction, right, you have uh, P uh, to the power t plus 1, uh, inductively we have that this is uh, um, df times p iteration t plus v. Now, by induction hypothesis, we can write this as df times, and pt is uh, df uh, to the power t uh, times p0, zero, uh, zero iteration, right, uh, plus uh, sum i equals from 0 to t minus 1, df to the power i times v. And then when you multiply this, you get, of course, df to the power t plus 1 t 0, 0 iteration, plus, and uh, when, oops, am I missing something? Do I, oh, I'm missing, of course, I'm missing plus v. Yeah, this v. Right, so this becomes uh, sum i equals from 1 to t 
uh, df to the power i times v plus v, but df to zero is just v, so this here, so I get this is uh, df to the power d plus one times p zero, plus precisely the sum i equals from zero to t of uh, df to the power i times v. Right? So this is true. But now notice, <coughs> by our assumption, because the spectral radius of df is kept small, this guy here goes to zero. So as a consequence, what do we have? As a consequence, we get precisely what we need. Okay, what do we get? We get that PT uh, converges precisely to sum of I equal zero uh, to t minus 1 df to the power i times v, and this is in fact approximately equal to p star. So notice, if we iterate this formula, the vector precisely converges to the optimal vector, right? If you iterate, if you keep doing this, if you iteratively compute that, you precisely get the optimal solution. But what do you need to, uh, to do this? Let's write it down, what this is, and uh, it will become crystal clear. So let's just expand it from the matrix form. <coughs> so we have the following, right? If I, um, okay, so 